What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for this week's episode of The Book of Boba Fett, notably Season 1, Episode 5, Return of the Mandalorian. So we basically get an exclusive episode of The Mandalorian, what he's been up to, what's going on with him, as far as how he fits in with the um, current state of the Star Wars universe in the Boba Fett timeline. We only get a marginal um, tie-in to Boba Fett at the end of the episode, so we'll kind of see where they take it from here. But overall, we get a lot of information as to what can possibly happen in The Mandalorian or they're providing some sort of tie-in to find out what's going on and I guess tie in Boba Fett to the various other Mandalorian factions. So as far as that goes, we'll have to see how they tie it in over the next couple of episodes. But this was essentially just an episode of The Mandalorian um, to kind of follow up how what we saw at the end of The Mandalorian Season 2 with um, Din Djarin having the Darksaber and um, basically what he's been up to. So in short, he's still up to bounty hunting and collecting on various bounties, bringing in people hot or cold. So overall, a good start there. Um, the fight scene was interesting because they made a notable point of showing of Din getting um, injured by the Darksaber and bringing it up later in the episode as far as the dark saber is not a saber that needs to be controlled but needs to be tied into the flow of whoever is wielding it from um, fight stance so i liked that whole idea that they tie in kind of what we see in jedi is that the crystal picks the lightsaber wielder and there's a symbiotic or an almost symbiotic relationship between a lightsaber and its user so I like that we see that kind of lore continued with the armorer and the Mandalorian. Um, and I kind of was wondering how um, Din could have gotten injured if he has armor everywhere, but I guess it's not necessarily his thigh is not really protected or it's the side of his leg, so he's not really anticipating getting injured on the side of his leg or his thigh, I guess, so it's kind of like his Achilles thigh. Um, and then continuing in the lore with once he finds the um, coven underneath that weird Halo-esque ring, um, I like that we get a little bit more backstory on the Night of a Thousand Tears when the Empire went out and attacked and essentially eliminated Mandalore, which was almost a Terminator 2 Judgment Day style level of... Um, wiping out so you have the TIE fighters going overhead which is almost like the Terminator fight weapons and then you have the droids who are almost who are basically like the Terminators so I like that bit of lore and I'm kind of curious to see more of that fallout so we'll see if that happens more in the Mandalorian or if the next couple of episodes deal with that as far as uh, maybe the Mandalorian and B Boba Fett going to Mandalore to deal with that, or if they do actually, in fact, go to meet Luke and Grogu, or as part of um, their fight, looking for Grogu's stop at Mandalore on the way. Um, otherwise, the, connect the rest of the episode from there was essentially a lot of connections to other Star Wars properties. So when um, the Mandalorian goes to Tatooine, we get a bd1 style level or style droid from jedi fallen order which is a nice touch um and then we get a prequel trilogy connection in the form of the naboo and one starfighter so i like that and that connection to pod racing because the engines are very much like pod racers almost to the point where souping up that starfighter could potentially have been made or a merging of the starfighter and a um pod racer so i liked that and then we had a new hope connection in the form of um the mandalorian testing out the engine in beggar's canyon so i like that little bit of um run through with the womp rat and everything so nifty little thing there it was almost short of saying just like beggar's canyon back home um and then we had a connection back to the mandalorian with the tie fighter captains notable or the tie fighter pilots notably the guy who um, Appa is in one of them and he recognizes the mandalorian's voice but ultimately lets him go just because and um kind of din jaren gets 
um, pulled over almost as, essentially along the lines of what felt like a Top Gun connection because he did a flyby of the space station and um, that pattern was full, I guess. But um, essentially, Din got pulled over for speeding and taking his new starfighter out on a joyride. So um, overall, a uh, interest, uh, good and fun little connection there. Um, so beyond that, that's really all the bulk of the episode. Um, it was, like I said, it was all it was entirely a Mandalorian episode in the middle of the Boba Fett um, season. So I'm kind of curious to see how they tie it in in full, aside from the connection at the end with Fennec Shand and Din wanting to do the job for Boba for free. Probably just because like a professional courtesy kind of thing, like. Um, they're both Mandalorian following their own paths, so we'll see how they deal with that. I'm curious to see how they continue to deal with the Darksaber training and if um, Din is able to better have a flow with the with it. Um, and ultimately, if they're going to leave the connection to getting Grogu again um, for the next or season three of The Mandalorian and focus more on... Um, Din and Boba going to Mandalore or finding the um, more Mandalorian covens or anything like that. So I'm kind of, or coverts, I guess, um, to see more about all of that. It's kind of hard to say. I'm not quite sure why they did this entire episode like this. Um, it would have been more interesting or even, I guess, to say that it would have, or to have more of Boba Fett in this episode, but it's hard to say what he's doing, or maybe he's been spending more time um, dealing with Mos the things in uh, Mos Espa and Mos Eisley, and so he sent Fennec to find out about why the Mandalorian is back on Tatooine or something like that, so um, it's all hard to say, but overall it was a good episode to, pro to progress the lore of um, the Mandalorian and um, probably to provide more of a teaser for what we can expect there but overall a good episode lots of good connections the first half was all about um the lore with the dark saber and then the second half is um it can be is basically setting up the starfighter so that din has a new transport after the loss of the razor crest and it's kind of left open-ended as far as the, he says he's gonna go find grogu but we'll see exactly where his path takes him for the next two episodes and how they focus on connecting that to Boba Fett and his ultimate goal of taking over Tatooine or if um, Boba is going to leave that all behind to join Din's covert with the rest of the Mandalorians and ultimately go back to Mandalore so that Din can call himself a Mandalorian again. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, what did you like, dislike about the episode and all of that, you can comment on this post on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular review. And until next time.